Father, we thank you. Let's lift our hands to God. We praise you, Father. We magnify you, God. We lift you up and we honor you, God. We thank you, God, Lord Father, for the offering, God. We thank you for your people who have given, God. We thank you, Lord Father, for what you're doing in this house, God. As we release your right now message, Father, as I release it, God, Lord Father, use me, Father. Lord Father, take the man away, Lord Father, and let, your, let me be an oracle, oracle for you, Father, a mouthpiece for you, Father. Lord Father, that it would pierce the heart of the enemy, God. Not your people, but your enemy, Lord Father, that, that, Father, that torments your people, God. We worship you, we praise you, we magnify you, we lift you up and we honor you, God. We give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, both now and forever. And all the people said, Amen. 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 It's so good for, uh, to hear him uh, refer as his wife, as, as his queen. Yes. Listen, uh, Tiara was crying up there because she said, I finally got him to listen to me. That's what she was crying about. <laughs> finally <laughs> listening to me. <laughs> We're going to talk about that today, y'all. Hey, guys, can we, can we be honest, guys? Can we... Can we get on the husbands just a little bit today? Yeah. I, I would do that very often. Yeah. Come on, Brother, Devon scratching his head like, yeah. you, you in the clear now. You already cleared yours up, so you good. Yeah. Can I be honest while we, while we can't keep relationships, y'all? Can, can I be honest? Anybody ready to listen to the truth? Yeah. All right. Can I be? I'm, and I'm talking to the women that's trying to be the man, too. Oh. Right. Oh. Yeah. Uh -oh, we ain't we weren't ready for that. <laughs> we weren't we ready for that. <laughs> Today's message is actually going to be. Uh, um, it's, I'm, going, I'm coming back from. Anybody was here when I, when I preached on measure of truth? Yeah. yeah. Okay, this is going to be part two. It's going to be part two of a measure of truth. And uh, as a subtitle, it's going to be Spirit of Truth versus the Spirit of Deception. Spirit of Truth versus the Spirit of Deception. You guys may be seated. Anybody realize the enemy trying to kill them? Yeah. yeah. Have you noticed? You ain't noticed that yet. Yeah. You might want to take your head out, out of the sand like the ostrich is, is doing. Can I tell you something? Just because you, you hide from the enemy and don't want to look at him, don't mean he, he ain't punching you in the back of your head. Anybody ready to fight? Yeah. Uh, listen, I'm I'm so uh, I'm just so torn in what God is doing this this in this church and change and, and what He's bringing us as a people. But he's bringing us to truth. Amen. It's the truth that what? All right, we're going to get started. All right, as we go today. What was the title? A Measure of Truth? What? Somebody paying attention up in here. That's what I'm talking about. Spirit of truth versus the spirit of deception. Um, and, I, and I might have to kind of connect some dots here before we, so everybody can understand what uh, the the unknown for everything God creates, the enemy creates an equal. Did you know, it's not a greater, but it's an equal. Get it? God is greater than everything. And so, if there's a holy spirit, there's a what? There's an unholy spirit, right? If there's an angel of protection, there's an angel of what? Destruction, right? If there's an angel of death, there's an angel of what? All right. So, everybody got that clear? Amen. And, and so uh, the Bible tells us we shouldn't be uh, just pretty much dumb to the, the, the wiles of the enemy, right? Anybody know what wiles is? means? W-L-I-E-S. What that means. I, I like to look up that when it says words like that, I like to look it up and see what that what does that mean? Right? It actually it actually means the deception of someone or the manipulation of someone to try to get you to do what they want you to do. That's what it actually means. Isn't that something? Something like our wives do us when they want some money. Uh-oh. I'm just going to throw that out there. You don't do that no more. No more. Since last week, y'all. I'm just messing with it. But doesn't that sound the wives of the enemy, listen, to get you to do, do y'all catch that? To get you to do what Satan wants you to do. In other words, he can't do anything without your participation. Amen. Anybody ready to, to, to fight and tie to the same old crazy stuff we've been going through? All right. I want, I want victory in the area of every area of my life. Anybody? Yes. And as God began to speak to me this week, as I, as I began to start going through this, it, it's kind of, you know, we talked about, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recap. Anybody, who, who all was here for, the, for that first message, the measure of truth? 
Okay, some people, a lot of people that wasn't here, so I'm going to recap just a little bit. So if y'all heard this, y'all just be patient, all right? But we came from Matthew, and it says, uh, Now the Holy Spirit, Matthew 24 and 11, Now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last time, some would turn away from the true faith. They would follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. They will say it is wrong to be married, wrong to eat certain foods, but God created those foods to be eaten with thanks by faithful people who know the truth. Did y'all see that? Faithful people. Since everything God created is good, we should not reject any of it, but we should receive it with thanks. For we know it is made and acceptable by the word of God and by and prayer. Then we went from Timothy 4, 1 through 5, and it says, And many false prophets will arise, and they will deceive and lead many people into error. For false Christ and false prophets will arise, and they will show great signs and wonders, so as to deceive and to lead astray, if possible, even the elect, God's chosen ones. See, I have warned you beforehand. You know, you see that? And so how many of us have, uh, have, uh, have seen uh, just kind of the crazy mess that's been going on in churches? And, and uh, I told you guys how upset I was when, I, when we first uh, did our little prophetic page. And I had a, uh, you know, we, we put on there clearly Prophet Dion and Apostle Duran and just the, the, the homosexual men that actually wrote us bothered me so bad. Now, you hear me? <laughs> it wasn't just that they, they it was just, did you not see the title Apostle that, I was I was offended by not just me but the but did you not and God began to speak to me and says well this is there's not nothing new son it's apostles and false prophets that's in my church right now that's operating as homosexuals right so for them to look at us and ignore the title don't even ask if you're a man of God or anything else but to immediately say hey that title means nothing to me are you gay do you see that. And, and it really offended me just for God's kingdom purposes. Are you, are you hearing me? Because it's, it's just a, it's, 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 that's terrible. It's just terrible to know that that's operating in God's church. And we wonder why people can't get free. We wonder why. Because I told you, you know, we talked about wolves, right? Anybody know about wolves? We talked about that. We talked about, hey, you know, most people see that, that, that hey, the wolf, the wolf that you see is not the one you should worry about. It's the one that you don't see. Right? It's the one that you don't see. And I watch a lot of natural, you know, geographics movies and things like that. And you'll see one wolf begin to chase an animal. Two, maybe two and three of them are chasing. But it's the one that you don't see. They have planned ahead, a mile ahead, there's another wolf waiting. And it will chase that thing all the way until right there when it comes out. And it's the one that it don't see that jumps in front of it that gets it. You hear? Because wolves can't really run that long, you know? So they have a strategy. And if you ever, even, I mean, this, this, wolves are so smart. I mean, this is, Bible actually refers to what? The enemy as raven wolves. That's going to that's gonna come out and get his people. And the, the wolves are so slick, yeah? They even, they even will, the, the wolves will even, uh, if it's a dog that you have and you're in the woods, they will actually befriend the dog and they will call to the dog. And the dog would think it's his friend and they would come. It would be one wolf there. And all of a sudden, the dog would turn around and it would be surrounded with wolves. And the wolves would tear it apart. Did you see that? That's how that's how the enemy does, right? In God's church. And so clearly we're gonna get, get through this and we're gonna go through. And so we went through a couple of things how the uh, the occult has infiltrated the church, right? Remember that? The Illuminati has infiltrated the church already. Uh, I was the, the second most offensive or the first most offensive thing was uh, the then the second more, even more offensive probably was that that I actually got an email Asking me, do I want to be a part of the Illuminati? They can make my church successful. What? Yes. You hear that? It says I can be a part of this great organization. I can make your church. You can you can have fame. You can have money. You can have it all. They never loved you. They never loved you. Got Wow. wow. I, I didn't even know that. Wow. Do you see that? Right? Yeah. And so this is the reason why you have to be set free before you can come up before God's people. Because the, I once had the love of money inside of me. What do you think I would have did? I would have traded y'all y'all for some. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but we friends, but that dollar. Listen, that million dollars y'all was just a little bit stronger than your handshake. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Yeah. 
And so God had to deliver me from the love of money, the love of, of lust, money, greediness of gain. He had to deliver me from all that before I could be up here before you today, right? And so I told you guys, I think last time I preached, the greatest thing you can have, the greatest, this is how you know you've achieved in God's kingdom, is that you have nothing the enemy can open and use to tempt you. Amen. Amen. Now, how many honestly in here can say that nothing in here can tempt you? I don't have any struggles with anything. Anything that comes my way, I can easily say, no way. How many people? Not even one person? Okay. I guess the apostle was on. Oh, I guess I can. That's why you apostle? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's why I'm an apostle. And I'm not saying that I can't be tempted. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I easily defeat the temptation. Let's put it that way. All right? So, so I can easily defeat the temptation. So if it's drugs, some, some of us is drugs, some of us is women, some of us is, is, is hustling. It's money. It's, we, can't, we can't see nothing pass. Our happiness is based off of money. Right? We're going somewhere here. And so uh, we also went over how people are preaching what you call another Jesus. Anybody ever heard of that before? It's actually in the Bible. It's called another Jesus. If there's a Jesus, there's another Jesus. It's actually said that on every uh, ritual or Halloween and things like that where uh, Satan actually himself actually gets, gets on the cross and, 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 and actually acts like he was crucified for people. And so there's rituals. Now, if you ever, guys, listen, if y'all ever been into, if y'all know anything about witch doctors and all that type of stuff, listen, I'm telling you, yeah, this little weak stuff that y'all see out here is nothing. Yeah. I'm talking about witch doctors that have put a, uh, uh, listen, a curse on you, and if you're not right with God, your lungs will be falling out the next day. I'm talking about curses. Like, this, this stuff is real. This is not, if, if you ever, listen, we got some testimonies in here that, that the people experienced. I'm talking about experienced testimonies. That, that you, you'll be, you, you think it's a lifetime movie compared to what happened to the person, because most people will not relate. If you tell, if people tell you what happened to them, They'll think that you're going crazy, right? They think that they'll put you in a, in a mental hospital talking about this, this <laughs> something attacked me at night while I was sleeping. Amen? Are y'all with me? And, but the end goal, and I'm going to briefly go through this, the end goal is the domination, is the domination of God's people and the domination of you. And God began to speak to me about why. Um, and I'm like, God, how can your elect people be fooled, Right? How can you let people be fooled? Like, how can those who are, are what is the what does the word elect mean? Okay, we got a dictionary right here. Chosen. chosen, my chosen people. That doesn't mean that you're walking in the calling, though. You see that? My chosen people, my elect people will even be fooled. The ones that I I, I really gave, and I and I'm, I'm gonna go through this because I gotta gotta break it down because the only thing that's gonna save us. Is what? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. And even though some people with the Holy Spirit are going to be fooled. And, you, and I'm going to go through that. But the first, before, before we go through that, we have to... Uh, it's one, th one thing that... Who has the Holy Spirit in here? You know, don't be embarrassed if you don't. All right? Holy Spirit. Now, now because I'm going to say this, because though, just because you raise your hand don't mean you're safe. All right? Because what God showed me is, is really... Those who don't have the Holy Spirit, it's a reason why they don't have it right now, but... They don't want to get the Holy Spirit. But even those who have the Holy Spirit don't give it full access to you. If you have the Holy Spirit, most people don't give the Holy Spirit full access. Are you hearing me? Right? And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you how. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, does, does the Holy Spirit have full access to you? I'm talking about all of you. Every bit of you. You know what most Christians will do? This is what God showed me. This is, this is really powerful. So pay attention because most Christians give the Holy Spirit their hearts, but their body, mind, and soul belongs to the enemy. You know what that does? I'll feel bad about the sin I'm doing, but I still won't stop it. You get that? How many feel bad when they, when they do it? I'll feel bad about it. I gave, I gave my heart. God, I really don't. I want to do it, but my body still. What is your your soul belongs to the enemy? You know what the soul is? What? What is your soul? Mind, will, and emotions. And so, some of us will give us uh, the, the the Holy Spirit and God. They'll they'll give the the they'll give a heart and they'll give the will, 
where the body belongs. The emotions bone. Some of them, everything got, the Holy Spirit got part of, but the enemy still got a hold of your emotions. Anybody? Okay, we're quiet in here, so I must be telling the truth. <laughs> must be telling the truth. And so what God showed me is you'll give a part of yourself to God, a part of yourself to, and don't get me wrong, your, your spirit belongs to, I'm, I'm not going to get ahead of myself, because most people think that, hey, I, get, I got saved, so yeah, your soul, it says your soul is redeemed until the day of redemption. Anybody know where the soul is? I just said it, yeah. Why, man? Soul. But a soul doesn't have life until the spirit. The soul equals your body and spirit, right? That's created. And so uh, um, I'm going to say it like this because you have to understand that what a soul, uh, what a soul and spirit, I want to break it down kind of what your spirit is because just think of your spirit as, uh, anybody know what a memory drive is, right? Yeah. Just think about a high-powered memory drive. Now, when you get a memory drive, it don't have nothing on it, right? It's not supposed to have nothing on it. And so it can, it can accept, though, a memory drive can accept what? Anything you put on it, right? Yeah. So if you put some evil pornography on it, it's going to accept it, right? It's, gonna, it's not going to question it. It's not going to, right? If you put something about Jesus on it, it's going to accept that. It ain't going to question it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to become whatever you put it. Are you getting it? That's how your spirit is. So when God gives you your spirit, the Bible tells you he created man and he breathed the breath of life in him. He breathed the spirit in him and it became a living soul. So your spirit and your body becomes is, is a soul, right? Which equals your mind, will, emotions, and all that stuff like that. And so it's, it's very, very real. It's very, very, this is how a lot of Christians live, where they'll give God their hearts. They'll give God, they'll, they'll say the sinner's prayer, but the enemy owns your emotions. The enemy owns your heart. The enemy owns whatever that damaged piece that's on you. Some of it, it could be your leg. It could be your sexual parts. It could be uh, whatever that, that thing is. All right, amen? Are you with me? Yeah. Okay. And so we'll feel bad about doing wrong, right? Well, does it ever stop you from doing wrong? That's because you only gave your heart to God. And you didn't give anything else to him. Wow. Amen? Amen. Anybody heard of uh, uh, best-selling artist, artist selling their soul to Satan? Yeah. Yes. Anybody heard of that? Yeah. Uh, you heard of that before? Yeah. But I'm going to ask you a question. Who do you think God's going to hold more responsible? The sinner that never gave his life to God and sold his soul or the one that he gave the Holy Spirit to and he still didn't give him access to him? Who do you think God's going to hold more responsible? Do you know the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Truth? It's, it's got multiple names and, and it's going to line up with what Kevin was saying too. You know, a name, but the Holy Spirit has called several different things in the Bible. One is the Spirit of Truth. Right? It's, uh, one of them is a life-giving spirit and also what the Holy Spirit is called and so uh, um, I, I believe God will hold more uh, I, will, I believe God will hold responsible Christians who gave their heart to God but at least this man sold their soul for money you know just you gave yours away you gave it away for lust are you are you seeing the picture here? You see, we think that's so strong. Uh, so I, he sold his soul to the... You gave yours away. You give yours away for less than money. So I can at least respect that he's going to have a, at least a joy-filled life of buying stuff, at least, before he go to hell. <laughs> right? We gonna, all we're going to have is our, our lust, our masturbation that we had that we couldn't get rid of. Right? And you have the spirit of truth inside of you, but you didn't give it access to that area that you couldn't. Are you hearing me? Which leads me to truth be told, number one. Your body will follow whoever has ownership of your soul. Your body will follow whoever has ownership of your soul. Your mind, your mind will emotions. If, if the Holy Spirit has access to your mind will and emotions, your body will follow. Amen? But if the spirit of deception, the unholy spirit, has, what is it going to follow? It's going to follow the law. It's going to follow what the world wants, right? Uh, and I, it's going to be kind of rough today, y'all. So y'all just bear with me, all right? We ain't getting to the meat yet. But we have to, uh, we have to stop being fooled by the enemy. 
All right. We, we, look, we fall for the same okie doke. If I touch you on your left shoulder and punch you on your right side every Sunday, you still fall. Come on now. I do the same thing. Somebody should have some reflexes by now to be able to know that I'm getting ready to punch you in your face. He did that last Sunday. Amen? Amen. Naturally, you wouldn't allow that to happen, but spiritually we do. We just keep going through the same circles over and over again. And it's the spirit of deception that enters God's church. And, and be honest with you, uh, you know, I, I hear so many people always talking about they hear from God. that, <laughs> And you're listening to a spirit of deception, Come on a lying spirit. Come on. And I talked about this briefly on Wednesday, uh, the last Wednesday we had service. And you, you're, 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 your body is attuned to a lying spirit. My God. A lying spirit that tells you that relationship going to work out. Keep on holding on. Mm. Lying spirit that keeps telling you to accept the abuse that Satan has given you. You know what another lying spirit tells you? It's you. It's you. That's the reason why this stuff happened. It's you. Amen? Amen. And so we got to get to the root of why we keep doing what we do. Uh, and I'm going to connect the dots because the, uh, I got to connect the dots so you can could, you could understand uh, where I'm going here. Because I'm, I'm just going to come out of John 6. And, you know, you guys don't got to turn to it. I'm just going to read it real quick. John 6 and 63. It says, The spirit gives life, the flesh profits nothing. You get that? The word that I have spoken to you are spirit in life. Yes. Did you get that? Yes. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit in life. You get that? The flesh profits nothing. Look at your, look at your hands and your, and your, and your legs. Say, it, it profits me nothing. It's only the spirit that is attached to your flesh that gives it life. Yes. You hear me? Yes. Uh, and so listen to me when I say this because you can't give your spirit to God. It already belongs to God. It already belongs to God. And I, I'm going to be honest with you uh, because, you know, we, I don't know if y'all are ready for the truth, but. Uh, I don't even know if I should say that. Y'all can't. Y'all can't handle that truth. Some people ain't ready for it. Because, I'll, just, I'll say it. Because the spirit of truth is on. Uh, you know, I know when people lose people, right? We, we always want to comfort people and say they're in heaven now. Do you know that's not biblical? Do you know when you die, your spirit goes back to God and you're waiting for judgment? There's people are not just sitting in hell and in heaven right now. Yeah, can y'all get? Y'all not ready for that truth? See, yeah. Some of your eyebrows on top of your head, like people tell you that to make you feel better. All right. The Bible tells you when God comes back, we're going to be caught up with him. Then your spirit will return to your body and then judgment will happen. You, whatever you did. And so what, your spirit returns to God as a recorder of what you did on this earth. Amen? You get that? Yeah. So when you die, your soul is no more because your spirit your soul is no more. And your spirit your spirit goes goes back to God. And so it, when it returns, though, it's gonna, your soul, everything is going to be intact. Those who are going to God, your body's going to be changed in an instant and all that. But when you read the biblical standards of what happens in death, we it's people that just keeps comforting people and telling people. Now, they will make it to heaven. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, no doubt. If they live the life, they're going to go to heaven and all that stuff. Their spirit did go to heaven, but they have no record. The Bible says the dead know nothing, right? right. Know nothing. And so if you're dead, you know nothing. Your spirit just returns to God and is sitting there as a recorder, sitting in this chamber waiting. For the judgment day. You get that? That's just a quick truth I'm going to give you. And so sometimes, sometimes I, I do understand where it comes from. Yeah, they're in a better place now. And they, they are. Their spirit is. You know, but that, that's, that's, you know, the dreams and things that people have is, is are real. Some people have real dreams of going to see God and all this stuff. But that's the biblical point of when, when, when somebody dies, what happens to them. Yeah. Anybody? Okay. All right. And so the Holy Spirit is known as the spirit of what? Truth. Truth. Uh, you know why? Because your flesh want to do some dumb stuff. <laughs> Amen. Anybody? Don't your flesh do some dumb 
your, your flesh do some dumb stuff. I'm a, let me tell you something. Without the spirit of truth, the, listen, the Holy Spirit have saved me from doing some dumb stuff. But I have to give access to the Holy Spirit to be able to tell me. Are you hearing me? See, some of us are giving us heart, but when it comes down to the decision making, I got it. I got it. I, I'll be able to. But you just messed up the last 10 decisions. And now you're going to do the same thing again. The Holy Spirit is also known as the spirit of life. In other words, if you listen to what he says, he's going to save you from making a life-changing mistake. Are you hearing me? You'll be able to live better. God, this Holy Spirit is known as the spirit of life. Oh, Lord. You know what the Holy Spirit also is known as? The spirit of holiness. And I'm going to address, I'm going to address, the, uh, I want to address really two subjects here. One, one is, is, what is the, what is the, the, the divine requirement for getting the Holy Spirit? Anybody? I, I like to get the, I like to answer some questions that, that, that kind of uh, underline. People don't really say, they just kind of, just flow with it. And, well, I guess the Holy Spirit is just not meant for me. I guess, eh, if I don't get it, I just don't, that, see, we'll, we'll push it away in that, in that way because we don't have it, Right? And then uh, uh, another, I guess you call it unquestionable, uh, I guess uncomfortable question would be, what does holiness really mean? Right? Anybody, when we hear that word holiness, we read it, we kind of skip over it. Holiness, that, I don't know if I can really meet the requirements. Anybody? What does holiness really mean? So I really want to address those two things today. Because the spirit of truth has to be in us if we're going to be able to see any type of deceptive spirit. Are you hearing me? Mm-hmm. I ask, I ask one, every week I ask God to give me uh, not a, the spirit of discernment, not only the spirit of discernment, but the discerning of spirits. It's two different things. Right. You, you should ask for the spirit of discernment and the discernment of spirits. Right? That's how sometimes you see us up there. I'll look at somebody and, the, and, and the, what spirit is in them will be called out, right? Mm -hmm. That's called the discerning of spirits. I can discern that this spirit is inside of a person. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Ezekiel 18, 19 says, the soul that sins shall surely, what? Die. I guess we only got one Bible scholar in here. Prophet. It says, the soul that sins. And it says, the spirit that sins shall surely, it says, the soul that sins shall surely die. All right? And so, uh, I'm gonna, matter of fact, I'm going to address, address it now. What, what are the requirements of Holy Spirit? Anybody? Can you receive the Holy Spirit? Sanctification, desperation. Anybody else? Believing. 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 Inviting him in. Inviting him in. Okay. Anybody else? I guess the spirit of truth side is over here. Everybody talking. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, so let's let's take a look at. Uh, I'm gonna look at the. Let me see how to put this. I gotta be delicate with y'all today. Make sure I'm not I'm not breaking everybody's souls in half. <laughs> that those are those are some good answers though. Those are some good answers. Uh, Mark seven and twenty one to twenty two. Jesus is talking out of the, out of the, about out of the heart, and he names about probably about 13, 14 sins. He, he begins to name. And I really want to attack this from really a religious standpoint as well uh, about the Holy Spirit because a lot of churches are teaching wrong how to, how to receive the Holy Spirit, right? Um, and it says, <laughs> Jesus is talking, he says, all these evil things will come out of a man. It, it's what defiles a man. It says what comes within. He names about 13, 14. But I'm just going to name five. I'm just going to name five of them. That everybody in this room, and you raise your hand if you never dealt with it, have had at least evil thoughts. Anybody in this room never had evil thoughts? Okay. No. no? You never had evil thoughts? Hannah? Okay. All right. Now let me put you in front of the Jesus scan. Let's we'll show you. <laughs> that was that Jesus MRI. I wish I had one. I know. Put you in front of that. Start showing your thoughts. Oh my goodness. Covetedness. That's an eagerness to have what somebody else has. Anybody else? Yeah. Huh? You ain't seen nobody that had, oh, man, I wish that was, 
It's covetedness. Anybody nobody dealt with that? Deceitfulness. Anybody lied in here before? Yeah. Okay. You said that you said that pretty strong, brother Troy. Sound like you said. That was just last night you sounded like that. Uh, pride, anybody? Yeah. Okay. And foolishness. That's my favorite one. <laughs> foolishness. Anybody? Mm -hmm. My wife always said, listen, that's just plain foolishness right there. That's a sin. Did you know that? Foolishness wow. is a sin. So I'm just going to take those five things. And so uh, uh, I've, I've probably been a Christian for 24 plus, 25 plus years. Uh, I've been a for real, for real Christian for probably 17 years. It's <laughs> for real, for real Christian. Yeah. It took me about seven, eight years to get the, to get all the foolishness out of me. And just say I've been a, uh, I've been a benefit to God's kingdom for 17 years. And the other other years I was I was I was dipping in Satan's kingdom with my toes, and that's what some of us doing here now. We got our, our foot in the warm water. I got. Our hearts was with Jesus, but our body is sure enough with Satan. Uh oh. Somebody. My Lord. Talking to somebody in here. And we wonder why we can't defeat the demons that we're battling. Mm -hmm. Look at your neighbor and say, Have you given the Holy Spirit access to all of you? <laughs> to every bit of you. I'm talking about those stinking thinking thoughts. Talking about those feelings that you feel Friday night. Nobody with you. My Lord. Friday night just got paid. <laughs> it's something about Friday night that foolishness begins to happen. <laughs> well, what's about Friday night that foolishness begins to happen? And Sunday that you're so tired you can't come to church. Those two things. You good all through the whole, the whole week. Right, right. But Friday... Yeah. Foolishness begins, and Sunday yep. you're so tired, yep. you need to recover. Yep. Mm. Amen? Amen. Sounds like some guilty parties up in here. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen to me, because I'm not, I'm no way in trying to lower God's standard of holiness. Remember that. I'm not, I'm not trying to make light of it. It is what it is. God's holiness and standards. You can't measure up to God's holiness and standards. Right. You agree with that, anybody? Anybody, nobody in this room, nobody in this world can. And so for churches to teach that God won't give you the Holy Spirit until your whole vessel is clean is wrong. That's not true. Because I've had the Holy Spirit and went back on, listen, like I said, I was a for real, for real. I had the Holy Spirit then, back then. But I didn't give him access to those sexual parts that I wanted, those desires that I had. You see? I had the Holy Spirit. I got the Holy Spirit. Now, God knew I wasn't going to get, so if he would have took that Holy Spirit back to him, then his grace, I still had the Holy Spirit. Right. You see, I still had the spirit of truth in me, yet I was letting the spirit of deception operate through right. me. Now, hear me? Right. So, so it was a 10, 10 90, 10, sometimes Holy Spirit had 10%, the spirit of deception had 90% of me. Right. right? But after a while, that number began to gain, it went up to 20, 30%, 40%, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit had more than the spirit of deception in me. And all of a sudden, like Devon says, now I was able to see the enemy. Oh, now I see what you're doing now. Because you know when you when the enemy has access to the, the spirit of deception is, is so keen to you, you really don't know, you really can't see when the enemy comes in. You, uh, you are blinded, like you're getting punched all over the place. Anybody watch the invisible man? You just catching it from all over the place. And really, it's a dumb spirit that, I call it a dumb spirit. It's literally a dumb spirit that be on you. You can't see. You just blinded. You don't see. Anybody been in them relationships that you love them so much? I know he beat me, but I made him mad. I shouldn't have burnt his toe, so I just, I, it was my fault, y'all. I shouldn't have got him that upset. Anybody didn't fool in here? Come on. My wife laughing over there. She sounded like she didn't get the food a couple of times. <laughs> we'll talk about that when we get home. <laughs> and so I'm not trying to lower God's standards, right? They're unchangeable, right? I'm merely trying to attack how you obtain what God's standards are. Mm -hmm. Right? Because yes. some of us obtain God's standards through what? Religious churches. 
so right? true. So that's what I'm attacking is, is the how did you obtain God's standards? Because we got some written laws in us that God is like, what did that go? Right. I look down like, you done wrote a, a cold-blooded law. I ain't even say. <laughs> and you are operating about this law, and God says, I never even spoke this. I never told you you had to do this. Do you see this? I never told you you had to do this. I never told you you don't have to eat steak. You couldn't eat steak. I know what you told you. You couldn't eat pork. I never told you. But what the, host, what the spirit of truth will tell you is if you're overeating, even if it's nerd candy. Come on. Do you see? That's good. God doesn't want to withhold. Good. It's just, man, being a Christian is just so unfun. No, it's not. You mean God telling, the spirit of life telling you how to live is, is no fun? Right. Are you kidding? He's telling you don't drink so you won't be a, a drunk. Right. So you can know where you're at, at the end, on, on the end of Fridays. <laughs> That you can at least know who you slept on. Uh -oh. My God. <sighs> That's too much for y'all. I gotta, I gotta unbutton my shirt and relax a little bit, honey. Too much truth coming up out of there. Listen to me, because it, it happened. I'm telling you, it happened. Every Friday, our flesh can't stop. Listen, I know, I know, I know an individual that every listen every Friday that that, that listen Monday through, through Thursday they're good. Friday they can't stop smoking weed. They're good Monday through Thursday. Friday hits, just can't stop. Perpetual cycle. Are you hearing me? Why? Why is that? Because I gave my heart to Christ. I gave my heart to, but in this area of my lungs, I, I just, I'll, I'll be okay. I can, I can defeat it. We'll talk ourselves into, we can defeat it. I told you, listen, how many, how many, fast, how many times have y'all fasted in here? <laughs> On the same thing? Anybody? Okay, just because you add number of days to it don't mean it's going to work this time. Right. <laughs> I'm going 45 days this time. Lord. After you get done starving, you're going to get yourself a whole cake and stuff it down. Right. <laughs> Flesh right back out of control. Are you, are you, something should be hitting you like, why am I failing the same? Thank you. The same test. Again, it's not the it's not the per person in church that you know that is gay, that you know is wrong, that you should look out for. You know what God showed me? He says, "Listen, the ones that you see that are doing wrong are actually pawns for the ones that are not that, that you don't see. You know, because the enemy wants you to feel comfortable. That's why the wolf will let you see him because it'll make you feel comfortable that I know where he's at like, as I'm running. He'll let you see one of them, but it's the ones that you don't see, and they use a measure of truth to get you." Are you getting that? Right? Everybody understands that in every lie, there's part what? It's just a little truth in every lie. If it wasn't, that you couldn't get you. And it amazes me that, you, you know what I've realized? That, that people who get, anybody got, got, got uh, hustled out of a, let's just say a scheme before. Anybody got schemed? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody got hustled? Ain't that the most humiliating? <laughs> Marlisha, all her toes, everything. Wow, okay. Is <laughs> that isn't that the most humiliating feeling? Yeah. When you just feel so stupid, like, how did I fall? You know what God spoke to me? You can't get hustled unless hustling is inside of you. You can't get schemed on unless scheming is inside of you. Y'all better catch that. Because, because if it's not inside of me, get money quick wouldn't be inside of me. Right? And so immediately when people tell you about hey man, you, you can do this right here, immediately scheme. I've told people, listen, man, that don't sound right with it. Still, still go right on along with it. <laughs> hey, two weeks later, hey, what happened to the scheme, man? I mean, what happened to the money you, you, you spent? <laughs> Brother Marcus, can, can I get an amen? <laughs> you tell, you tell, you tell Kia about that at the church. Yeah, I'm sure you and she ain't tell you that one, Kia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you told her, okay, brother, spirit of truth is on him. <laughs> brother, you lie to all other women. <laughs> 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 but it is, it is amazing though because I, I you know I saw a young man in Marcus that 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 had the right heart but I had to tell him I said tell people the truth Marcus when you talk to them stop trying to hide. listen stop trying to pop uh, all this stuff up on people now y'all get serious now you gonna pop all this stuff up on somebody and he's called me probably a couple of weeks ago right so it's probably a couple months maybe a couple months you know I jacked up some time he says oh, I did what you said and I, I was honest and it worked out you see how it happens when you the spirit of truth is on you. 
when you tell people the truth, do you know mercy actually comes? God actually plays mercy in people when you tell the truth. Did you know? Let me, let me give you an example. Uh, you see the media always chasing people when it's an accusation, right? right. They be all on the cameras, all in their face. Did you? Did you do? Yeah, I did it. You don't see it no more. Right. You don't see it no more. The minute they admit, you may see it one more day, they admit it to it. You don't see them covering it no more. The per because persecution is over the minute you tell the truth. Now catch that. Persecution of your demons will be over the minute you tell the truth. Uh, Y'all better catch that. Persecution will be at the minute you give the spirit of truth access to the doors you've been hiding. All these black boxes that's inside of you. Oh my God. Can I get an amen Lexus back there? She back there looking at me. Like, you bet not. Y'all know how you And so, religious churches that, listen, they had me fearful. Listen, the Holy Spirit not going to dwell on that if you're nasty self. <laughs> yeah, this is how the old folks used to <laughs> Not just a nasty. <laughs> My mom used to say that to us that, listen, trash is for the trash can. Oh, Y'all just nasty. Yeah, anybody ever tried to talk to their mom and they just looked at you like you was just the worst? <laughs> tried to have a conversation with my mom before? I said, my, my first daughter said, hey, mom, my girlfriend pregnant. Well, how did that happen? <laughs> God, I didn't know how to answer that, y'all. I said, mom, you want me to explain that? Or? <laughs> you had five children, mom, you should. I'll catch that. <laughs> that was my mom asked. But my mom always had a way of making you feel like you're just the nastiest person on earth. Mm. And what did it do? It, and it made me and I want to talk to her, right? Uh -oh. I better hide this now because my mom is, is always going to give me a self-righteous. Did you know it's people that's grown right now that still hides from their mother? Wow. It's people that's grown right now that still hide things from their mom. Wow. I better not tell my mom this. Right? And they say with their mouth that they don't care. I don't care about that. But their actions show that you do care about what that person yeah. thinks about you. Yeah. Right? Right? Why is it eating you on you so, mad, so much because they're mad at you? Right? Are you hearing me? Okay, so what happens is if you, this is what happens when, when you teach that Holy Spirit cannot dwell everybody. Now, I'm not saying there's no standards for the Holy Spirit because I'm going to show you it is some standards. Right? If you got unforgiveness in your heart and all that stuff, the Holy Spirit is not going to do it. Listen, if you got, if you got unbelief, then that's not going to do anything. And so, but, but he is nowhere in the Bible that he gives a requirement that you have to have your whole life totally 110%. I've been a Christian for over 20, 25 plus years. Right? Been in church all my life. Right? I done messed up some, some bad stuff. But the whole thing is the enemy and religion can get you to think that way. You'll never receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, and so what it does is it deters some believers from, from seeking the Holy Spirit because they believe they can never live up to that standard of holiness, right? And, and also now it makes those who do who, who have received, so you see, I say, who got the Holy Spirit? It makes those think that now when you think like that, it makes you believe that you must have been perfect to get the Holy Spirit, and now it makes you try to live perfect to keep the Holy Spirit, right? Both both areas are wrong because God already know you're not perfect, right? Right? Are you getting this? All right? Look at your name and say the Holy Spirit is for everybody. The Holy Spirit is for everybody. All right? And so what is the divine requirement to receive the Holy Spirit? Let's, let's go to, uh, if, you, if somebody can go to, uh, go to my favorite version now, the uh, Passion version. Uh, you can go to Acts 10 and 30. If anybody got the Passion version? Son, can you, you come up? And read that for me. We can get more. Testing, testing. Acts 10 and 13. Let's, let's start just reading from there. No, I was trying to find the Passion version. Yeah, find the Passion version. Got it. Yeah, this is the girl. If you can. <laughs> start at 30. Yeah, 10, 30. Start there. He says... Cornelius replied, four days ago I was fasting and praying here. Hold on a second, before you, you start there, I'm just going to give you a <laughs> 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 uh, 
I mean, let me let me give you a history so you don't do, so you won't be lost. Uh, um, uh, you know, Cornelius is 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 doing his fast and all this stuff. But before that, God tells uh, Peter has a dream of bugs coming to him, and God tells him, "Listen, I want you to go to this person's house." And he has this dream, and he goes through all these visions, and he says, oh, "God, no, we can, we can't eat bugs. We, we can't do it." He said, "God says, don't call and clean what I call." Right? And so now let's read. Cornelius replied, Four days ago I was fasting and praying here in my home at this very hour, three o'clock in the afternoon, when a man in glistening clothing suddenly appeared in front of my eyes. He said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayers. Your generosity to the poor has been recorded and remembered in God's presence. Yes, that it has been recorded. Go ahead. However, you must send for a man named Simon, the rock who is staying in Joppa as a guest of Simon the Tanner, who lives by the sea. So I immediately sent my men to bring you here, and you were kind enough to come. And now, here we are, all of us in God's presence, anxious to hear the message that God has put into your heart to share with us. Okay, read. Peter said, Now I know for certain that God doesn't show favoritism with people, but treats everyone on the same basis. You guess that? That's good. God does not show favoritism with people. Now I know. Mm. Go ahead. It makes no difference what race of people one belongs to. If they show deep reverence for God and are committed to did doing you, what's right. Did you catch that? That's good. If they show deep reverence for God and are committed to doing what's right. Ask your neighbor how you committed. If you committed to doing what's right, you'll get rid of the evil that's in your sight. If you're committed to doing what's right, you do whatever it takes. Go ahead, son. They are acceptable before him. God sent his word to the Jewish people first, announcing the wonderful news of hope and peace through Jesus, the anointed one, the Lord of all. You are well aware of all that began in Galilee and spread throughout the land of Israel immediately after John preached his message of baptism. Jesus of Nazareth was anointed by God with the Holy Spirit and with great power. He did wonderful things for others and divinely healed all who were under the tyranny of the devil, for God had anointed him. We apostles were eyewitnesses to all the miracles that he performed throughout the land of Israel. Finally, in Jerusalem, he was crucified on the cross, but God raised him from the dead three days later, allowing him to be seen openly. He didn't appear to everyone, but he appeared to us, his chosen witnesses. He actually ate and drank with us after he rose from the dead. Jesus ordered us to preach and warn the people that God had appointed him to be the judge of the living and the dead. And not only us, but all of the prophets agree in their did you, right. Did you, did, you catch did you hear that? The living and the judge of the living and the... Go ahead. And not only us, but all the prophets agree in the writings that everyone who believes in him receives complete forgiveness of sins through the power of his name. Did you catch that? Wow. Go ahead, next. While Peter was speaking, the Holy Spirit cascaded over all, the listen, all those listening to his message. The Jewish brothers who had accompanied Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out on people who weren't Jews. There you go. That's it. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? So what are the requirements? The first requirements for those who, first of all, have a commitment. What did he say? What did he? And then it says the Holy Spirit began to go around the room. You know why? To see who had the faith to believe what Peter was saying to them. Wow. Oh, y'all better, better catch that. Yeah. Faith is the requirement for the Holy Spirit. Wow. Are you, are you catch that? For those who believe and who are committed, and it says the Holy Spirit begin to go around the room. Oh, yeah, you believe. Wow. The Spirit of the Lord. You believe what he's... Are you saying, why do you think God, I, I'm, I was thinking at first, like, hold on a second, son. Why would God call, tell him to call for Peter? Because he had to tell him the good news first. Mm -hmm. right? That's right. He had to hear the good news, so Peter is telling him the good news of Jesus Christ. And yes. immediately the hearts begin to believe, yes. and the Holy Spirit came upon them. Wow. Did they ask for the Holy Spirit? No. You can go sit down, son. Are you catching that? So what are divine requirements? Faith. In a committed life. Listen, I'm committed to. Are you hearing me? Do you see this? Yes, Lord. 
All right. How many want the Holy Spirit in here? How many who have the Holy Spirit is going to give them access to, to what they're supposed to have access to? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You see, if the, ex, if, the, if the Holy Spirit don't have access to your mind, the will and emotions, how is it going to speak to you and tell you this person is deceptive? Right. How? Because you've been the judge of that, that area in your life for so long, you're going to judge it by your own. And this is how you're going to fool yourself. Because you use your own wisdom instead of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of truth reveals all. Look at your neighbor and say the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. You can't lie in front of the spirit of truth. Did you know I had demons try to hide in front of me? Yeah. I had demons try to hide. And I said, you can hide from me, but you cannot hide from the spirit of truth. Right? Oh, Lord, y'all better come to this place. Y'all better come on in this place. Are you seeing the divine requirements? Right? I'm going to read from Ephesians real fast. Uh, I, and this is, listen, my, my new uh, version that Pastor, Pastor Patricia and Chantel and copied off of, the Passion Translation. <laughs> Y'all catch that on the way home. <laughs> it is now the Apostle's Passion <laughs> Translation. An Apostle had to write this, I'm telling you. But uh, in Ephesians 6 and 10 through 19, it is, Paul is talking about spiritual warfare here, right? And so as you go into it, it says, Now, beloved one, I have saved the most important truths, listen to it, for last. Be supernaturally infused with the strength through your life union with the Lord Jesus. Stand victorious with the forces of his explosive power flowing in and through you. You hear that? All right? Stand victorious with his forces. All right? He didn't say go coward in the back of the corner. And, oh, God, this, this hurts. This, he said stand with the explosive power that's inside of you. Yes. So you have the spirit of truth inside of you that you're not even using. Come on. Are you hearing me? That's right. Put on the complete set of armor provided for us. Yeah. It didn't get you the armor, you won't put it on. Right. My God. Are you hearing? So that you would be, so you that you would be protected as you fight against the evil strategies of the accuser. Did you see that? All right? You see, look at your, look at your neighbor and say, stop thinking you're smarter than Satan because you're not. All right? Did, did, you, did you know? Listen, uh, let me tell you what a, a good thief does. Anybody ever seen a thief that takes stuff off of people? Yeah. Like, I'm talking right in front of them? Yeah. Right there in front of them. Watch that. Do you, did you notice what they do? They have them point attention to something they value while they take something that they really want. Yeah. They'll grab their watch and start talking to them. That person is focusing on their watch, but they're hand is really taking their wallet. You see? Or vice versa. They'll, they'll touch their wallet and have them focus on, in their mind, they're locked on that wallet. And they, Man, where did my watch go? It's gone. You see, that's what the enemy does. I hear. You see? Look at your neighbor and say, stop focusing on the wrong thing. And say, listen to the spirit of truth. Because the spirit of truth gives you the spirit of life. It says, put on the complete set of armor provided for us so that you'll be able to protect it as you fight against the evil strategies of the accuser. It says, your hand-to-hand, -hand, this is really good, your hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realm. Did you hear that? It says, for they are a powerful class of demon gods, or case. Did you see that? They are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits. Did you see that? Huh? The demon gods are the principalities. Did you know are the fallen angels are the demon gods? Right. The evil spirits are actually spirits that are under the rule of those. Right. Yeah. Right. right. So there is a difference between evil spirits and demon gods. There is a difference. It's two, it's two different. The principalities out there who consider themselves gods. These are the ones that used to make people sacrifice their children to them and yeah. so on. You hear? Yep. Get that? Right. That's right. All right. The, then there's lower class evil spirits who will be punished if they don't do it with their, with the other gods tell them to do. Are you hearing me? Their gods tell them to do. They're more powerful than them, so they have to, it's a rule, the same thing as authority, right on earth, right? Okay. And say, so your hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realm. For they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. Because of you, because of this, now listen to this, it gives you now, because of this, look at your neighbor and say, because of this, because of 
you must wear all the armor that God provides so you're protected as you confront it, as you confront the slander. So you're protected, so you're protected as you confront the slander. Are you here? Anybody hearing some slander in your ears? You ain't gonna never make it. You always gonna be. You always, the slander. That's right. You must use the Holy Spirit and give him full access. See, we put on that partial armor. It's just in our hearts. Uh -huh. hey, Holy Spirit, you can stay here. You can just stay in my pocket right there. I'll access you when I go through something. Did you know the Holy Spirit can stop you from making mistakes? Listen, the Holy Spirit... Listen, it, this, this is a true story. This, this is, it was a man that, I forgot his name. But there's a, there was a man that prayed so much. It says pray without ceasing, right? He prayed so much. His faith was so high that even when he get a flat, he, he's on the way to a conference. He got a flat tire. He prayed for the tire and the tire went back up. Wow. <laughs> you talking about, he said, and he had a model that, listen, I, I never cease praying. Even when I'm driving, I'm praying. I'm praying. And the Lord, he was all in tune with the Holy Spirit that, hey, Oh, I don't got a chance to change, to change this tire. In Jesus' name, the tire, things like that would happen to him all the time. Are you hear me? You know why we can't, listen, we can't even, we can't even allow our faith to believe that Jesus is going to pay our bill. My Lord. You think you're going to believe, you wouldn't even attempt that. How many, how many here would have admit that you wouldn't even attempt it? You wouldn't even attempt that. That's, listen, that shows you some faith right there that you wouldn't even attempt to pray for your tire. Yes. Wow. Are you hearing me? Yes. Did you, uh, that's, that, that checked me. I'm like, God, I wouldn't even did that. Because I automatically believe that, God, you're just going to make me change this tire. <laughs> Look at your name and say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. it's a never run flat, too. <laughs> he'll, he'll help you out. Did you see that? Listen, he'll give you access. Listen, according to your faith, you, are you hearing me? And so don't be mad at him because he got more faith than us. Oh my God, y'all better. Woo -wee. Are you getting something out of this? Yes. It's getting hot in here. Don't take off all your clothes. It said you must wear, you must use all the armor. God. The Holy Spirit is part of your armor. Are you hearing me? It is the spirit of truth that tells you the spirit of oh Lord. It tells you when somebody's lying to you. That's right. Amen. Amen. It goes on to say, listen, you must wear all the armor God provided so you're protected as you confront. Did you catch that? Yeah. Not as you wait for the fight to come to you. As you confront, if I confront somebody, listen, if somebody's out there stealing your car right now, what you finna do? Hey! You gonna confront them, right? Yeah. Right? Let somebody grab my wife and hug her like she, I'm about to confront you. <laughs> yeah, I'll be apostle afterwards, but you finna get body slammed right now. <laughs> Are you? I'm gonna confront you because you're in the wrong. Right? And remember, listen, let me, let me tell you this too because, you know, sometimes the enemy will try to make you feel bad for having righteous anger. Sometimes if you see people doing foolish stuff up in here and you get upset, that's not, listen, that's, that's righteous anger. That's, that actually shows that you have the apostleship that's inside of you. Listen, it, apostles hate when things are out of order. When people are phony and people are doing stuff, that, listen. Huh? And so don't allow the enemy to make that perverted and make you think that you're just talking, thinking bad about somebody. All right? That's a gift from God. Listen, I, I, I hate when things are out of order. Listen, and I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a very, I'll say I'm not a very confrontational person. I will, confront, I don't like, I'll just say I don't, I don't like, my wife probably disagree with me. I don't like confronting people, but let something be out of order. You're going to hear from me. Because it's going to bother me until I do talk to you. Are you hearing me? All right. It goes on to say number one. Then it goes on after this, it tells you what to do. It says, put on the belt of truth yes. to strengthen your stand to triumph. Most of us can't even get past that. You know what the belt of truth is? What? The Holy Spirit. Yeah. 
It's the spirit of truth that's inside of you. We haven't even put that. We haven't even put that on yet. We got them in our pockets over here. Just stay right there. Well, I'll let you know if I need you. Right? We we use the Holy Spirit like insurance. That's what we use it. Right? Once we have an accident, then we want to call in a number. One eight hundred Holy Spirit. Yeah, I'm gonna file a claim. I'm gonna file a claim. Yeah, Satan just busted me in the back of my head. I need ten stitches. Are you gonna pay for this? This is how we use the Holy Spirit as insurance. You just stay here until I need you. Number two, it says, put on holiness as a protective armor that covers your heart, which goes to my second point. What is holiness? Anybody? Faith and commitment. Faith and commitment. Anybody else? This is just dead as a doorknob over here. Spirit of... Will these dry bones live over here? <laughs> okay. He said, he said he set apart, okay. Yeah. What, so what is... Uh, anybody else? What is the standard... What, Anybody can say what you what you got your standard of holiness from there? Anybody? I know mine was from religious church. I mean, they made me feel like I had to eat TV dinners. <laughs> Listen, I was told that I couldn't go to the movies. I was sitting in the seat of the scornful if I did. See, some y'all, y'all, a lot of y'all millennials have, have have had it easy. Yeah. We had we were forced to go to church from seven o'clock in the morning. To 3 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> 7 o'clock one day? Listen, I'm telling you, we had, we had church from 7 o'clock to almost 5 o'clock. We'd get out. We had some church of chicken was right across the street. We'd go to church of chicken, eat 7 o'clock. The service started again. We'd get out at 3 o'clock in the morning. So I knew Sunday was just dedicated to God. It was, I mean, I was asleep most of the time, but... <laughs> but the same person I saw preach that holiness of hell is the one that got my mom's best friend pregnant. Wow. Became my sister. Yeah. And because my mom, her, my, my uh, mom's best friend got pregnant, she actually, it triggered lupus in her. It was an aggressive lupus that she had. And she died within a year of having her child. And she, the last wish was to ask my mom, could she take care of her child? And so she became our sister and she grew up with us. Wow. So I always had that reminder of a failed pastor who cheated. Right here, you telling me that I have to do all this stuff, but you're sleeping with my mom's best friend in the church. In the church. I don't know what I say. In the church. I'm literally saying in the church. You see, we've been through some stuff. Yeah. This is the reason why I didn't want to know to deal with God with it. When I was 18, 19, I, I'm not, I, listen, I believed in God, but I'm not. I don't want nothing to do with God. This, 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 if I got to go through this to see this mess. But look at your name and say, for such a time as now. For such a time as now. I let you see that so you can set my people free been through that. Are you hearing me? Y'all better catch this. The Lord, listen, the Holy Spirit is, listen, it's, it's, it's not one of them feel good messages that I'm finna get a blessing, but yeah, listen, you finna get a blessing in the, anyway. Because this is gonna set you free from the inside. Are you hearing yes. me? And many of you are holding your blessings on naturally because you're not set free in the inside. Come on. Yeah. Uh, Y'all better catch this. So good. So true. Wow. And so I'm gonna read this. Listen, it said, "Holiness is uh, uh, listen. Holiness is accessing the person of holiness. Because that's what holiness is. It's accessing the person of holiness that's inside of you, Christ. Mm -hmm. Right? That's what God means. He said, listen, you know, give access to the Holy One that's inside of you. What is the Holy Spirit? Do you know Holy Spirit is God's Spirit? Huh? Yes. It, God, it's God's Spirit that's inside of you that gives you a check system to say, hey." You're going to live holy or... And so, the unho most of us got the unholy spirit inside of our check systems. So we do whatever the unholy spirit says. Deceptive, deceiving spirit. And so, holiness is simply, simply this. Allowing the, the Holy One, which is Christ inside of me, to have full reign of my vessel. Right. That's what living in holiness is. Mm -hmm. Because if you gave the Holy Spirit full reign, see, this is the reason why so many people think that it's so hard to stop a sin. Because mm -hmm. you've not given the Holy Spirit full reign. That's right. This is why you think it's so hard. I, can't, I just can't. Yes. And let me just say this because there's a difference of having a demon inside of you Preach and a demon God. on the outside of you. Mm -hmm. Now, demons on the inside of you can speak to you and demons on the outside can speak to you. Mm -hmm. But when, when uh, as a matter of fact, I, I saw a video that uh, Caitlin had, had posted. It was a, that was a very good about that demon, from demons. Uh, and he was, he was saying the same thing. Listen, 
He's a demon on the inside of you. When something, if you, this is how you know a demon's on the inside of you. In a particular sin, you you feel like you're pulled to actually. You feel like something is actually making you do this. Exactly. A demon on the outside of you is just a voice. Hey, you should go ahead and do it. Exactly. Right. Get away from me. Exactly. You're able to shoot away. It's no pressure. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. Now, this is what we need to admit, right? Mm -hmm. You see, no, nobody want to admit that we got a demon inside of us, right? Mm -hmm. And so, if you notice that, most people say, hey, when I came to church, that man, my life started going to hell. The truth is, when you came to hurt, the truth is when the enemy, because the enemy don't like to be shown. Are you hearing me? Just imagine uncovering a, a demon that's 3,000 years old. It's been in your generation for 3,000 years, and somebody comes in and takes the cover off of it. Right. Right? And so that's why you see it starting to act a fool on you. All of a sudden, all the stuff starts breaking out, and it start, what it does is start to try to speed up its process. It's designed for you and try to kill you faster before you hear this good news and start thinking that you can change and start believing that you can get the Holy Spirit. See, it, it may hate messages like this. He wants you to believe, he wants you to, the spirit of exception wants you to believe this is just always, it's going to be like this all the time. Yep. Yeah, they're going to change you. Yep. You know what another uh, spirit of deception does? Still, he'll bring up your family's history. All of a sudden, you're sitting there, your mama got diabetes. All of a sudden, you got a fear of not having these things. I want that. And I hope I don't. Why do you think that came to your mind all of a sudden? Because whatever you think about the most draws itself to you. Are you that's another way the spirit of deception gets you. And all of a sudden, you know what you're thinking? You're thinking you're protecting yourself from that, but you actually just brought it on yourself yeah. by accepting the thought of it. Are you hearing me? Y'all gonna catch this. I'm gonna get y'all out of here in just a minute. Anybody want some more truth? Yeah. Listen to this. Romans 8 and 14, it says the mature, listen to this, it says the mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And you did not receive the spirit of religious duty. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. That's what we have in here. A lot of people got the spirit of religious duty. You know how you know you got that? It was hard for you to come to church today. Oh, God. Wow. <sighs> I wish I could just sleep today. I just, that's the spirit of religious duty. But you know what makes you come? Probably gonna say stuff. They right. probably gonna be looking at me funny if I was coming. Right, right. That's the spirit of religious duty. Yep. I feel like I gotta come. Mm. I feel like I'm forced to come. I feel like I'm forced to pay my tithes. Mm. Oh yeah, I just yep, yep. But catch that. I've been like, give you the spirit of religious duty, leading you back to into the fear of never being good enough. Mm. Did That's you see bad. that? That's so good. Did you wow. see that? I didn't give you the spirit of religious duty. Leads you back to the fear of never being good enough. Yeah. Did you? Y'all better. I'm catch my time, buddy. Y'all. <laughs> oh. I told you it's for the fallout at home. He's about to record. Grab oh. that towel and fall out the Holy Spirit. Y'all know how the churches be doing, y'all. <laughs> do, you, do you see? Do you see that? It says, I'm not giving you the spirit of religious duty that leading you back to the fear of never being good enough. Anybody feel that way? I'm never good enough to get the Holy Spirit. Right? Did I, did I tell you about the testimony with Astra who came over? It was hard for her to come over and pray for my back. And the pain left my back. But I said, listen, she's not even there in faith all the way yet. But the Lord only needs a mustard seed That's right. of faith to be able to use you. That's right. right? Now, some of y'all, you're telling me you can't muster up a mustard seed of faith? Are you hearing me? The tiniest thing in the world? It says, but you have received the spirit of full acceptance. Mm -hmm. Did you get that? Yeah. Full acceptance, not given the Holy Spirit, part acceptance. Yeah, I believe in my heart that Jesus died. That's all it goes. It's in my heart. As far as my flesh, it's still saying you can have this part. Right? But you have received the spirit of full acceptance enfolding you into the family of God. What does that sound like? And folding you. And you will never feel orphaned like an orphan. For as he rises up within us, our spirits join him in saying the words of tender affected, affection. Beloved Father, for the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us. Yes. As he whispers in our most inner being, you are God's beloved child. Yes, God. Did you see that? 
Is, isn't that somehow some of us deal with fatherhood shifts with God? I can't believe. Look at your neighbor and say, let the Holy Spirit in. It says the Holy Spirit whispers in your father's child. What are you doing? You are the father. Listen, you are the greatest of the great. Are you hearing me? The Holy Spirit begins to speak to you, encourage you. Listen, get, get up. What are you doing living like this? Get, I, see, without the Holy Spirit, I don't know where I'll be right now. It spoke to me even when I was in my sins. What are you doing? Get, anybody? Anybody that went back and the Holy Spirit just get, get up. What are you doing? Like the prodigal son, it says he came to himself and said, what, why am I doing living like this and I got my, the dogs are eating better at... Oh, Let me go back to my father's mansion who accepted me. The Holy Spirit began to speak to you. And it says, and since we are his true children, we qualify to share all his treasures. List this. We indeed, we are hairs of God himself. Mm -hmm. I hear it. Heirs of God himself. What does that sound like? All right? And then it goes on and says, And since we are joined to Christ, we also inherit all that he is and all that he has. Did you get that? Is Jesus the greatest power on this earth? Yeah. Is his name the greatest name? Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, you have access to that greatest name. Yes. And you have access to the power that goes with it. We will experience in being co-glorified with him. Listen to this now. The key, provided that we accept his suffering as our own. What does that suffering as his own mean? Huh? That flesh. Who's sufficient of that flesh? You can't have this. Denying yourself. Are you hearing me? Denying yourself. Galatians 5 and 1 9. It says, as... Listen, at last we have freedom. For Christ has set us free. We must always cherish this truth and firmly refuse to go back into the bondage of our past. Did you get that? Yeah. Listen, I love you some TPT version, y'all. Yes. Listen, listen, I didn't know it was there until I heard Pat Patricia talking about it. I think Chantel mentioned it to me in the car, too. So I'm going to check that out. It says, I, Paul, tell you, if you think that there's a benefit in circum... Now, let me, let, me, let me set the standards here. To connect the dots. Because people were going around. Jesus, he's telling them Jesus about Jesus' story, just like Peter did. And they received the Holy Spirit, right? But people are going around, after they tell them the story, they're going around saying, but you got to be circum... Some of the people were saying, but you got to be circumstanced right. with right. Jesus. Yeah. With believing. You can't... Or you, does that sound like religion? Yeah. But you got to have on white first before... <laughs> Don't that sound like religion? Yeah. Huh? Spiritual legalism. Yeah. But you got to do this first before you can. You got to obey what I say. And you got to think what I do, what I think is best for, which usually relates to you doing something for me, right? right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I have pastors tell people they can't go to school. Yeah. yeah, you focus on God's house first. Focus on my, my focus on helping me first. Then you go to school. Yeah. Selfishness. Yeah. It says, I, Paul, tell you, if you think that you there's a benefit. A circumcision, uh, circumcision in Jewish regulations, then you're acting as though Christ is not enough. All right, come on now. Are you hearing that? Yes. I say it again, emphatically. Again, I got some of the hard headed people. I got to tell you again. God said no. <laughs> this is Paul saying it again. Emphatically, I tell you, if you let yourself be circumstanced, if you let yourself circumcised, should I say? If you let yourself be circumcised, you are obligated to fulfill every single one of the commandments and regulations of the law. Did you see that? Yep. Now, if I told you you got to fulfill every one of the commandments of the law, would you feel like you don't qualify? <coughs> this is what we do when we put these little things. In other words, he says, listen, if you allow yourself to be bonded, this is not, now, let me tell you this because this is very important. This is where the enemy operates at. Do you know the enemy operates and he gets his rule from the law? He operates under the law. And so he tries to get you to believe that Jesus didn't forgive you. Oh, not great. He, didn't. he tries to get you to believe that, you're unforgiv that you did an unforgivable sin. Wow. To get, because he operates by the, by the law. He, he knows that the, the Lord says if you don't forgive, the tormentors will come. And so he, and he tries to get you to, un to have unforgiveness in your heart because he knows I can operate in this 
this unsaid law that's not that's not in operation anymore. Uh -huh. Are you hear me? Uh -huh. But it is an operation because he keeps holding you to it and you keep on participating. Wow. Are you hearing me? You can't play with nobody in the playground if there ain't nobody to play, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen? Yeah. You can't argue with somebody if it's not if they're not arguing back with you. Are you hearing me? And it says, if you do these things, if you keep thinking that I got to do this special stuff for God, it says you make Christ like, you acting like Christ not enough. And this is how we, we live. Like Christ is not enough to set you free. Huh? If we're thinking that we bound, if we bind ourselves to the sin that we have, you're acting like Christ is not enough. Y'all better catch that. So you're acting like Christ can't set you free. Jesus. Is he not the greatest power? Yes. Then why do you keep telling yourself that this sin is too strong for you? Mm. I'm going to always be like this. It's mm -hmm. just the way it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. If you want to be made right with God by fulfilling the obligations of the law, you have cut, your, cut off more than your flesh. You have cut yourself away from Christ and have fallen away from the revelation of grace. Do you see that? Wow. Do you see that? Wow. And he goes on to say, dear friend, he said, why do you think the religious system persecutes me? He said, is it because I preach the message of being circumcised and keeping all the laws in Judaism? It says, no, not at all. There no longer is there no longer offense over the cross. In other words, you should be offended. Is there no longer no offense over the cross? It says, beloved ones. It says, God has called us to live in the life of freedom, but don't view this wonderful freedom as an excuse to set up a basis of operation in the natural realm. Constantly love each other and be committed to serve one another. For all the law can be summarized in one grand statement. Demonstrate love to your neighbor even as you care for your, and love yourself. Yeah. Yep. Do you see that? Yep. And so if you look at that, I, ask, I mean, I'm talking, just thinking about God. I'm saying, if you took one word to sum up Jesus, what, could, what, what would that be? If you can have one word. Love? Anybody else? You care? It's one word. You know what? You know what it is? Selflessness. Selflessness is love. Did you know that? Selflessness is love. Jesus was totally selfless. He put others before himself. Are you hearing? He always did. No matter. You never see Jesus caring about his where I'm gonna live at. Where am I going? My God, I just got through. I just got through ministering to all these people. I ain't got no hotel to stay in. He was selfless. He was selfless. Yes, he was. That's the one thing you see. Yes. And this is the one thing as a husband is that we should be an example to our wives on, y'all. Uh-oh. The truth of the matter is most of us got in our relationships the wrong foundation. You know what we got into it so we can have sex. And now that that's got all old and it's not no more... Don't have the tingly feeling behind it and can't wait to get home. Now you're seeing the flaws of the individual. Amen. Huh? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Huh? Did you know that you know for our, our lives as a husband, and I had to learn this myself, I have to be selfless. When I make decisions for my family, I gotta think about how's this gonna affect. You know what I this is why some of y'all don't need to be pastors. Because when I make decisions, I gotta think about how's this gonna affect you. Huh? That's right. How's this going to affect you if I do this? If I made a mistake, if I decide to go to my flesh and just go ahead and sleep with this lady, how's this going to affect you? You see that? This is what you should be thinking about. And so, uh, I mean, we got, and this is, I'm, I'm just going to go into uh, just a little bit. Y'all husbands, y'all bear with me now. Because, our hus listen, as a husband, our wives need some help, y'all. Amen. Just because they don't say they don't need no help don't mean that they don't need any help. Anybody know that our wives got secret language they talk? And our husbands is usually dumb to it. Can I, can I talk? Amen. Do you want your marriage? Yes. Huh? <coughs> help your wife out. Even if it's going to get the, you see her coming in with grocery store. We sit there right on the couch playing the video game. 
got 10 bags in their hands. Done been at work 12 hours. You at home, you ain't did nothing for your wife. You haven't even thought. This is how you know you're selfish because you haven't even thought to make her load easier. Are you hearing me? You haven't even thought to say, honey, take the night off. You at home waiting for her to cook. Are you? Oh. The men are quiet in here. They're so quiet. <laughs> the men are quiet in here. But let me help you because the spirit of deception is in our in our in, in these marriages. Are you hearing me? Because you're not talking to them, you can rest assured a spirit of deception is. You can rest assured a spirit of deception is. I've seen this happen many times. Many times. Even to my own self. Many times. Because the spirit of deception begins to tell that woman that they need to get out of here. He's not a protector. He's not a, He's not this. He's not he's, You see, they won't say nothing to you. Now, I'm not saying that you're wrong. You, you're right, ladies and all. Because the truth of the matter is the enemy will have a lady try to plan their exit strategy. Where the spirit of truth should have just told them, listen, get your lazy self up and you need to help me. Sir. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> listen, because there's wisdom here. Y'all better listen. Because God's showing me this. Yes, Are you hearing Lord. me? Yes, Lord. Where people are wanting to get divorced, but you really never even told your husband you are lazy. I need some help. Now, you ain't got to say it in that way. <laughs> I know you feel like saying it that way, and I know you done called them much more names than that in your head. Are you hearing me? And let me tell you something. I'm not the I'm not the greatest man in the world, but when I do something, I do it right. That's one thing you could you would be able to tell about me. When I do something, if I take on a project, you rest sure it's gonna be done right. It's gonna be overdone. Alright? But I know this, listen, you know what why 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 let me put it this way. Let me go ahead and say this. And I wanna read this. It says, let me emphasize this. As you yield to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit, did you see that? Mm -hmm. You will abandon cravings of your self-life. Yes, God. Catch that. When your self-life craves the things that offend the Holy Spirit, you hinder him from living freely within you. Did you get that? Jesus. Huh? When your self-life craves the thing, the things that offend the Holy Spirit, you're, you hinder him from living freely within you. And the Holy Spirit's intense craving hinders your self-life from dominating you. Yes, God. Did you hear that? Yes. Wow. yes. So if you give in to the, the self-life, mm -hmm. self, the Holy Spirit is hindered. Or if you get the Holy Spirit, it says it dominates it and keeps it from overtaking you. Right. That's right. Better, That's right. Better catch this. That's right. It's that TPT, y'all. <laughs> yeah, but catch this. Yes. And the Holy Spirit's intense craving hindered. It says the Holy Spirit's intense cravings. Mm -hmm. huh? Does it sound like you can be addicted to the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit can give you some addictive ways. Are you? Are you hearing this? It's not bad. No, not for the Holy Spirit, because He's not gonna hurt you. That's right. He's not gonna hurt you. That's right. It's just gonna be some extra power that you're gonna have. That's all you. Are you hearing me? Yes, it says, so then the two incompatible and conflicting forces within yourself, life of flesh and the new creation life of spirit. But when you yield to the life of the spirit, you will no longer be living under the law, but soaring above it. Yes. Did you catch that? Yes. You won't be living under the law. You'll be above the law. Anybody wish they're above the law and the red lights you can run? <laughs> can you imagine that? Can you imagine? Did you, did you know diplomatics are above the law? Diplomatics? Did you know they can actually run? They can actually go shoot somebody, they can run a light, and the, and the United States can't touch them. They are above the law. And wouldn't that be a good feeling? I can get rid of all my enemies. You can literally shoot somebody in the face in front of a police officer and say, I'm a diplomatic, show my, and they cannot arrest you. Are you hearing me? Now, they're not going to let you back over in the United States, but you're, they're above the law. And so it tells you right there, if it tells you when you yield to the life of the Spirit, you will no longer be under the law. What does the enemy operate at? Under the law. You will be above the law. 
In other words, when the enemy comes to check, there's no law breaking that I can enter this vessel with. Are you hearing me? Y'all yeah, better catch that. Somebody, somebody in here getting this. I'm preaching to somebody. You see, a key sign that the lion spirit has entered us or is trying to enter us is having thoughts, self-centered thoughts. Huh? You see, I'm seeing this. I'm seeing this more and more, especially in marriages with self-centered thoughts, where the enemy is telling them to leave their husband, leave the husband telling them to leave. Because this is what God shows me right here. He said, "Listen, they got together when they were broken, right?" Usually one of them gets a little bit more spiritual than the other. They get, they go a little bit faster, you know, right? I'll just take Sade and, and Daryl, right? Y'all don't mind me talking about y'all. Right, right, right. So, Sade begin to start. Daryl brought Sade to church, right? Because he knew she was jacked up. Listen. When I tell you, well, I still owe you one for that too, Daryl. Listen, we, I still owe you one from that. Yeah. You know, I told y'all testimony, right? That Daryl used to work for our company, right? So um, he was addicted to video games, right? And he called me, sometimes him and his wife would have, have little disputes all the time, all the time, because he would just play on this video game. And I, when I tell you this video game had him, it, he would have so much anger. If he lost uh, just a game, he would tear up the house and all types of stuff. I tell you, he probably bought the video game how many, how many times? <laughs> he probably bought the same game, I don't know how many times. But he would tear up all types of stuff, right? And so finally I said, son, I said, listen, man, just, just bring me the video game. She said, all right, I'll be over there. Y'all know I ain't here from there on two years. <laughs> three years. It was three years. It was three years, wasn't it? it, was like, it was... I'm going on three years. <laughs> he was supposed to be bringing the video game over. I didn't hear from him in three years. We would talk like every other month, you know, a couple of months we would talk. Right. Didn't hear from this dude for three years. Wow. But finally, uh, 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 finally he had called me and he had just met Sade. He said, oh, yeah, man, you know I'm divorced now. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Is that because you didn't bring me the video game? <laughs> it, it was more than that, y'all. It wasn't the video game. No, 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 right, right. Okay. But, but the, funny, the funny part about that is he brought Sade. Like, he knew Sade was, a, was marriage material, but he's like, I got to get these demons up out of her first. She, she be tripping. And so finally, he brought Sade and whatever. It was just like he knew, you know, all that stuff went down. Y'all know the deliverances we've been through uh, with Sade. And look how powerful the ministry that comes out of her now is. But she began to start excelling a little bit more. She you know, started getting the Holy Spirit and stuff like that, and Daryl still didn't, you know what I'm saying? In other words, she went a little bit past. But at the same time, uh, listen, the enemy will try to get you to look down on your husband because he's not spiritually as strong as you are. That's so good. That's so hear true. Me? That's a spirit of deception right there. Yep. And God showed me, this is what God showed me. He says, listen, both of them was broken when they got together, and now because I raised one of them up a little bit faster, now you're looking at your mate like they're not good enough for you anymore. Do you see how twisted that it is? Yeah. Huh? You're looking at them as you're as the reason. Uh, this is the number. This is the number one reason I see. You're not. Uh, you're, you're the reason why I'm not coming up in life. You're dragging me down. Wow. Y'all know these thoughts are in the house. Y'all know. These thoughts are. In, you're the reason why I'm not being successful. Right? You, okay. I gotta talk about the women just a little bit too. All right. Okay. Because the spirit of deception would try to deceive you to make you look. How did you go from I love you and the best thing in this world to yeah. you're my enemy now? Right. That's powerful. Right. How did that happen? Mm. Make sure they never say the spirit of deception. Spirit, spirit of deception. deception. That's right. Because you're attuned to the spirit of deception. Yes. And you know what the spirit of deception uses? Your self-protection. Yeah. Your ability to self-protect and all of a sudden... Because you didn't use the spirit of truth that's inside of you to tell your husband oh, come on. that I'm not attracted to you no more. You didn't gain weight. You, you know, all you're doing is on the You need to get yourself together. <laughs> huh? All right. You ain't been holding your weight in this family. Put that dog on video game down like they had to tell Daryl. But did Daryl learn his lesson now? <laughs> but was it at the cost of a divorce? First, now I have to get. Now he's learned in the second marriage that he's in that I can't sit here and play video games all day. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Did you know video games? <laughs> listen, I'm telling you, video games are at a cost. Listen, the responsibility. Listen, it's, video games are a cost of it. I read an article. On, it, it, it says young people are even le having less sex now in this generation because of video games. Wow. Does that tell you that a video game fulfills your purpose? Did you know a video game can take your purpose? Huh? 
Did you see that? Mm -hmm. Marital sex and, and just worldly, whatever. It, that, that, are you seeing this? No, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with video games. Are you hearing me? I'm not saying this. But it says Jesus came to set us free. Yes. If I'm addicted to video games, if this is my purpose in life, and I'm waiting for a job to knock on my door, you think that's coming? Hmm? Do you see how the spirit of deception can happen? But on the other hand, the woman is not telling the, using the spirit of truth to tell her husband. And so now, all of a sudden, the spirit of deception, husbands remember that the wives are the weaker. Are you hearing me? Yes. The Bible tells you where to treat her, not harshly. All right, right? And so who do you think the enemy is going to easily come to? And begin to say, hey, he's just not feeling you, you, need to, you need to leave. Do you know it's women that would pack up their stuff and make an exit plan? I'll leave their husbands and they don't even know nothing. About. And so let me ask you a question. What would hurt the husband more? You hurt his feelings now with the spirit of truth and telling him who he is and he needs to get himself together. Or you had a whole elaborate plan in your mind to leave your husband and you go through with it. He comes home and everything is gone. Now listen, it's happening. I'm telling you. And I'm telling you, the enemy has plans for it to happen even in this place. So you see, the spirit of truth reveals the enemy's plans. Are you hearing me? And so, if you can't be honest with your husband, if you can't be honest with your mate, what do you got the spirit of truth inside of you for? I'm not talking about getting to the place where you're frustrated and you're, are you just fat, nasty, and ugly. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about encouraging your husband to get up and do something. Yes, God. Yes, God. Or your wife to get up and do something. Yes, yes, huh? yes, yes. Honey, you know what? I noticed you're not yourself like you used to. Right. Are you hearing me? Right. You're not yourself like you used to. Yeah. It's like you don't even care about your appearance no more, you just say. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. But we'll let the spirit of deception come in and tell us, oh, she just, uh, you, just nah, you need to go with wow. Oh, that's how she used to look. Are you hearing me? Do you see how the spirit of deception comes in? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. did, you, did, did you know because we, we usually get attracted, we marry people because we're attracted to them right. instead of right. being spiritually attracted to them. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. If your purpose is not based off of God, it's going to show where your marriage is in lust. Are you hearing me? It's going to show, in the end, it's going to show that y'all just got married because y'all lusted each other, not loved each other. Wow. Right? Huh? And so, what the enemy does, you can see a key sign that the enemy comes in with self-interest, self-centered thoughts, protect yourself, get your child, run, get, go, all this other crazy stuff. You begin to start having this Satan versus so-and-so productions presents. <laughs> it's just a movie going. Yeah, he's stopping you from being about to be stopping this and that. The reason why you're not being. See, husbands will sit there dumbfounded and acting like we're the best husbands in the world. Did you? Listen, I used to think I was too. I thought I was the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> Didn't know I was destroying my wife. Are you hearing me? My ways were destroying my wife. How come you don't talk to me? Because every time I do, you go off. Wow. You want me to trust you now to talk to my family? The last time I told you I opened up emotionally to you, you tore my heart out. My God. Are you hearing me? Yes, God. Y'all yep. better come on. Is God not speaking in this place? Yes, 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 yes. And so can I step on some of those hidden thoughts that we have? Yes, so so Anybody? Because yes. that's where the enemy is, the spirit of deception. Yes. Oh, let me tell the story. I had a young lady contact me too. Right? Told me about a dream that she had. All right, and talk about the women. I'm going to show you just how on the opposite side it can happen. Had this, this nice dream. Said it was wet in the house. It was rain coming in. And so I, I hid. And all of a sudden, I got a text that said, hey, what do you think this, this dreaming? I looked it up on Google. <laughs> and I'm reading the explanation for the dream. And it says, it was, listen, this dream, listen. And it came from a church website. I think it was a biblical way. Listen, it was so full of witchcraft, mm -hmm. this article. Mm -hmm. You see, if you have a spirit of deception in you, it would tell you to look up something that's going to agree with you. Wow. All of a sudden, your attention is attracted to this, this article, and you're reading it as if it's the truth. Sir. Yep. Come on. But you know what it said? It said, hey, reigning in your house means that somebody is about to back up, betray you. Somebody close to you is about to betray you. Oh, wow. Guess who that man come to? Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Right, 
right. They talking about right. Read on. The spirit of deception. Jesus. I said that article was so full of witchcraft and fear. Mm-hmm. But you won't notice it because it agrees to the spirit of deception that you're right. listening to. Right. Wow. Husband trying to come over and talk to him. Hey, you. I don't want nothing. I ain't hungry. Are you hear me? I just ain't hungry today. Why? Trying to spend some time with you, baby. I need some air. But you know what the enemy begin to start saying? Because they accepted what they read. That. The husband was the area of the spiritual attack, the weakness that was coming. Self-protection. Are you hearing me? It's your, yeah. It's, they talking about you. Doesn't that sound like a psychic reading right there? Yeah. Huh? Rain, a dream of rain means that somebody's going to come against you and destroy your whole life, and, and you need to be very careful, and you need to be all these fear-based stuff, and I'm just, I'm just eating it up. Wow. Well, who do you gonna think that is? The next person that's closest to you, right? Now, all of a sudden, what was a happy marriage just turned into a, a fight without even knowing I was in a fight. Amen? Wow. The husband didn't even know he was in a fight, at least. And so I had to, I had to send a text to that person and said, go apologize to your husband. Right. Now, you hear me? Because I already know what happened. Right. Because the spirit of protection we're trying to... And so this is very important that you give access to the Holy Spirit so you'll see when the enemy is trying to enter... Are you here? And so I ask the question all the time. Listen, have you, have you ever successfully protected yourself before? Most people will say no. Hey, I ain't talking about no physical fight. Have you ever successfully stopped something from happening to you? By the, 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 the wisdom that you thought? And so this is, this, is the, this is the truth of the matter. is The spirit of deception is so deceiving that you would think it's the Holy Spirit talking to you. That's right. And warning you. Ooh, come on, sir. Ladies. That's so true. Huh? So you, I've seen the manipulation from ladies too. Yeah. Yes. I've had ladies tell their husbands, God showed me you was attracted to a woman today at your job. <laughs> <laughs> the man like <laughs> trying to find the woman he was attracted to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that third customer was kind of pretty. <laughs> and, and, and he showed me that you wanted to sleep with her. What? Foolishness. <laughs> Well, I guess, I guess you, I guess I would. It's like, what have you, you said? Wow. I guess. The Holy Spirit is not going to show you no. that your husband's attracted. Can I tell you a secret? I'm attracted to a lot of women. This is true. You see, see you'll be fooling yourself if I, if I tell my wife that she's not attracted to no man at all. Oh, her eyes are only for me. Fool? <laughs> <laughs> you think there's no man that walk past here and my wife say, oh, okay, you're just kind of handsome. <laughs> And she will be a fool to think that I don't ever see a pretty woman in this. Right. Stop asking you, do you think she attractive? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have conversations like that, me and my wife. Yeah. Yeah. We have conversations like that. Yeah. Yeah. She punched me afterwards and started laughing. But we, we honest with her. Like, right. Yeah, she's fine. <laughs> but you got my heart, honey. You got my heart. I used to always mess with her. I said, listen, Beyonce and I, when we was dating and everything, we was... I used to mess with my wife all the time. Sometimes I call in the room, hey, honey, come check this out. I said, what? My ex-girlfriend's singing. <laughs> well, we got a relationship like that. Y'all Y'all don't try that at home now if y'all got a relationship. Y'all might have a, some Sunday morning shades on when you come to church. <laughs> right. But you, you know it's in our marriage, the spirit of truth. Stop trying to fool yourself to think that your husband's not going to ever see nobody. Your wife's not going to ever see nobody that looks better than you. That's right. She's not with you because you're the best looking man on earth. Right? right? Some of y'all, she ain't with you because you look good at all. No. <laughs> but you know why? Because this, the spirit of deception comes in. And, and what, what our standards were before are now gone. And we don't have anything to compare it to. Are you here? Because I stand up before was the big bud and the light skin did and all this. Now that don't that don't qualify no more when God cleans you up. Are you hearing me? Right? That don't class that don't qualify no more. Right? And so my, to me, I'm I'm in love more with my wife now today than I, I was when I met her. Right? Even in the smaller ver version of her that she beats herself about. I said, listen, honey, you're beautiful to me now. You know what more is more beautiful? She's beautiful on the outside, but more beautiful is her heart. Yes. The Bible tells you beauty fades. 
Okay. And so if I marry you just because you got abs and a nice body now, when I when you have my child, guess what? Yeah. Them, the, them breasts are not gonna be sitting up like they were. Yeah. All right. Is that too much for y'all? They're not gonna be sitting up here. They're gonna be down here. All right. That might be too much information for y'all. Is it the truth? And so if you keep chasing that, now you got your wife that's on these diet fads, trying to keep up, because she don't want you to cheat on her. Right. Right. Chasing the stairs. And all why? And you know why? You you chase you chasing something that you could never ever keep. Because in our minds, we think we're doing all this and we don't care about the wife's feeling. We don't care about her being satisfied. We don't care. In every area, if you can just look at your wife struggling with bags and everything, listen, take the child from your wife sometime and give her a day off. Are you, are you hearing me? I love that about my son. I, I think McKay do a little bit too much, but he's okay. He became Mr. Mom. Like, he be having on the bib outfits, matching outfits and everything with McKay. You see that? <laughs> I remember he got he got that little that little roller. He came to my house, boy. He said, "Hey, Dad, you see how you see how to break it down and turn to this?" He was so happy, boy. I said, "I'm sorry, the, the, the wife's gonna be happy about this." He said, "Watch this. It turned on two wheels too. You see this? It was only 150, man. It was, man, it was nice, man. He was happy about that stroller, boy. I think it turned to like four, five different things. And happy, boy. I said, "Okay, Mr. Mom." I, I said, he, he take care of his daughter, boy. He do a little bit too much, but at the same time, like I was saying, some men don't help their wives at all. We just think that it's, God didn't build them to overrun them. Are you hearing me? Right. right? They have enough that they deal with mentally. Listen to me. Mentally. Did you know if you're, if you're attacked mentally, you're, it makes your physical body even more weaker than if you was to stay and pick up bricks all day? You'd be more tired mentally when the enemy attacks than your body just being just physical work. Are you hearing me? This is why we God had to show me. Listen, my wife is a. It, that's why it tells you your wife is a gift. Did you know the Bible says it's a? She's a gift for all the hard turmoil that we have to have on this earth, and we treat it like it's garbage, like it's just supposed to be there. Amen. Amen. Same thing with our husbands. Step up and start being the protectors of your. house. Listen, you're the providers and you're the protector of your house. Yeah. All right. Yep. Look and start using the Holy Spirit to see what the enemy is trying to do to your wife. Are you hearing me? Some of y'all need to have some personal conversations when y'all get home. I mean, serious. And don't get offended when somebody tells you your breath stink, all right? <laughs> all right? We can't get offended. If, listen, it makes, I'm telling you, if you get through these little, these little awkward moments in your marriage, it'll make you stronger. Right. You hear? Right. All right? Because I told my wife, listen, I don't want her to ever feel comfortable with me that she don't want to brush her teeth. And I do the same thing. Sometimes, like, she tells me she don't care, but I'll be like, oh. like, when I wake up in the morning, my tongue feel nasty. I'm like, honey, I don't want to kiss you. I'm like, she said, honey, I don't care about that. I do. <laughs> and she, she said it's not bad, but hey, it be feeling like it's bad in my mouth. But you know what? I've always been like that, though. Like, I never want to kiss her with my breath stinking. Right? So why do I change all of a sudden now that we married? I just give her the, the whole holotosis kiss. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Eyebrows just melt off. <laughs> 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 listen, the, the spirit of truth is helping you guys. Listen, yep. If you listen to this now and be honest with your mate, all right? Okay, be honest with your mate. You know, I can tell like, sometimes my wife don't like what I what I put on. She, I come out the room and I feel like I feel like going off sometimes. But I come out the closet, she look at me, go, <laughs> you wearing that again? I'm a grown cursor man, woman. Oh, <laughs> but you know what? I had to start paying attention to that because she likes me to look nice. Are you right. Is it not, see, I can take, I used to get offended. Now I'm not right. looking. Right, I'm a grown cursor man. I wear what I want to wear. Hey, throw that out there a couple of times. <laughs> you know, same thing. Yeah. Wear what I want to wear. But you know what? I'm not using the gift that God gave me, the helpmate that she gave me. Honey, you got all these nice shirts, and it's true. Listen, yes. I don't wear the same ten shirts, and I got twenty shirts over here. I didn't even take the tags off of. I, I'm a comfort, I'm a comfort creature. I'm telling you, I wear the same pants, same everything. That's just why. Yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Give me steak and potato every day. I don't want to try no crap. No, that's just who I am. But guess what? That doesn't mean it's right. Are you hearing me? 
So she helps me. Are you hearing me? Yes, so today I picked out a whole new outfit for y'all. Y'all see this? <laughs> Took a shirt with the tag. Tag was still on and everything. <laughs> Went ironed it for and everything. You know what? I was waiting for her to say I look good and she ain't saying a word, y'all. She <laughs> ain't saying a thing to me. No. I told her she looked nice and everything. I said, oh, you look fine today. She said, thank you. <laughs> she didn't give me no compliment at all. But she noticed if I got that old t-shirt on, boy. She, she noticed that. Y'all steady y'all feet. Did y'all get enough of that? Yeah. I'm, I'm helping y'all marriages, I'm telling you, because God wants y'all to be free. Listen, talk to your talk to your mate. If you're having a problem with your mate, let the spirit of truth be, not the spirit of deception guide you. Are you hearing me? Yes, Lord. Right. God didn't give you your mate for him to be the entry or or she to be the, the one that's that's stopping you from prospering. Right. Are you hearing me? That's a that's a lie that came from directly from the spirit of deception. Oh, this is a mistake. Come on, y'all. Think about that. Think about that. Where's your enthusiasm that you had before? Because you can have a love in your marriage that's greater than ever before. I, I, got, I experienced that. Listen, I love her more than I've ever done. Are you hearing me? I'm attracted to her more than I've ever. You know what my prayer is, Lord? Let the breast of my wife satisfy me always. That's, that's a scripture. All right. May I never be attracted to another woman. May, may I never be pulled away. And, and it's always God has given me the, just like magnet to metal. Yes. All right. There ain't going to be no creeping up in here, y'all. Y'all can go somewhere. Right. Are you hearing me? Yes, now, has an enemy tried to get me to? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely tried to get me to. But you know how what, what blows me away is that I don't have to no more. I don't have to be, I don't have to be up because I'm trying to f fulfill myself through another woman because she thinks I'm, I'm cute. Are you hearing me? That's what I had to, listen, I was so broken that I used to be over 450 pounds, y'all, close to 450. Once I lost that weight, I was ugly, listen, I was a listen, kid in the candy store trying to find women and I began to get used to women telling me I look good. And you know, that was a broken part of me that I always had to have a woman telling me I look good. Right? So I know before that that just because she didn't tell me I look good today, guess what I would have been doing? I'll just find me another woman to tell me I look good. Right. Huh? That was my mindset before. But thank God for the power of the Holy Spirit who takes that, that wickedness that's inside of me and it crushes it down. <coughs> now you hear me? Yeah. Pushes it down. All right? It keeps it in, in check. So now that I have self-control, that I don't have to look at every woman that walks past. I don't have to follow. I'm driving. I almost get in an accident. I got to follow all the way. <laughs> Did you know that's called wandering eyes? It's like a spirit called wandering eyes. I used to have I could not stop until that, that woman was out of my view. Had to see her. Just somebody jogging with some nice. Oh, man. All in the mirror, the rearview mirror until I get out of my. <laughs> Can you imagine losing your life and going to see the Lord? Uh, uh, what you doing here so early? Uh, Let's play back your spirit. Oh, I see. Get this clown out of here. I never knew you. How you hear me? All right, I'm done, y'all. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We praise you. We magnify you, God. We thank you for your, your, your spirit in this place, oh God. We thank you for the spirit of truth, God. Yes, God. And if that's you, I want, I want you to, to just begin to think. Listen, if you've been listening to the spirit of deception about your mate, about life, period, about your job, now, you ain't going to never get no promotion. You ain't going to, they don't value you. All this other stuff. All right? All right? Listen, if that's you, it's been, been to ask God to forgive you. Ask that spirit. So God, let the Holy Spirit in totally into your heart, your body, your mind. And, and, and that should be your prayer this week. All right. Holy Spirit, come in. I give you full access to my heart, to my private areas where I'm having bad, bad lips I can't control, to my mouth that I can't control, to my ears that I can't stop listening to this music. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We praise you, God. We magnify you, God. Even now, Lord, Father, we lift up your standards in this place, oh God. And we thank you for your spirit of truth, Lord, Father, that was in this place. Oh, God, we thank you. We worship you. We praise you, God, even now, Father. We bind up every stronghold, everything that's not of you in this place, oh God. 
And we thank you, God, that even now, Lord Father, that a uh, one accordness, Lord Father, that not only will we have marriages in church unchained, we will have successful marriages, God. Yes. Not people are just coexisting with each other, but loving each other, God. Yes. Father, us husbands will step up as men in our house, God, and help our wives, oh God. Our wives will begin to communicate with our husbands, oh God. Lord Father, we thank you, oh God, that every miscommunication is broken, God. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Y'all get something out of that.